Hi, I am Kalyan Reddy Daida and I will be your instructor in this course Google Kubernetes Engine with DevOps 75 Real World Demos. In this course, we have implemented 25 plus Kubernetes concepts like Kubernetes pods, replica sets, deployments and also Kubernetes services like node port service, headless service, cluster IP service, external name service, load balancer service and ingress service. In addition to that, storage concepts we have implemented like storage classes, persistent volume claims, persistent volumes, volume snapshots and volume snapshot classes and also volume restore. And from storage classes perspective, we have also implemented custom storage classes in addition to whatever defined or whatever by default created by GKE. And we have also created Kubernetes namespace concept and implemented it with both imperative and declarative manner. And we have also implemented namespace resource quota, namespace limit range and also container requests and limits concepts. And we have also created or implemented config maps, service accounts and Kubernetes secrets concept. And we have also implemented cluster autoscaler and horizontal pod autoscaler from autoscaling side. And finally, we have also implemented a daemon set concept. And these 25 plus Kubernetes concepts in combination with 32 plus Google Cloud services, we have implemented 75 real world demos. So these 32 plus Google Cloud services include GKE standard cluster, GKE autopilot cluster and in GKE standard cluster, we have implemented both the public and private cluster options and when we are implementing these GKE clusters, we are in need of using the compute engine resources like virtual missions, storage disks, storage snapshots and storage images and the compute engine instance groups and health checks and network endpoints or network endpoint groups. And also from VPC, we are supposed to use the default VPC with the default subnets and also external and internal IP addresses and VPC network firewalls wherever required. And also from network services perspective, we have used the load balancing and cloud DNS, cloud content delivery network, CDN, cloud NAT, cloud domains, private service connections, cloud armor and also managed SSL certificates and SSL policies. And from IAM perspective also, we have used service accounts, roles, identity aware proxy. And for DevOps, we have also used the cloud source repositories, cloud build, and we have also used Google artifact registry. And we have also used cloud SQL in the implementation to implement a LB to DB use case. So like this, we have used multiple Google Cloud services here to implement this 75 real world demos and these 75 real world demos we have a github step by step documentation available for them and everything is uh, for every section and for every demo we have a detailed folder available with their cube manifest which is kubernetes yaml files for us and in addition to that if you want to see any demo as a reference here so let's take a demo 22 or section 22 so in each demo you will have the cube manifest folder and inside that cube manifest folder you are going to have the kubernetes resource yaml manifest so example persistent volume claim is one of the kubernetes resource so it is 01 persistent volume claim and its related yaml manifest will be written here and config map is another kubernetes resource and its related yaml manifest is present in 02 user management config map.yaml and how we have written it in a incremental order how our application needs so we can build in a step by step manner so at step one if we are building persistent volume claim so at that point of time it is zero one where we are writing the yaml manifest for that and at step five we are implementing kubernetes deployment so at that point you can directly reference that in a incremental order and Every demo in this course is very well documented in GitHub and every file used is organized in sequential order based on how demo progresses. In addition to that, in few demos wherein we are in need of multiple files, even those things we have organized in a folder and inside folder the related files. And 
if we are uh, how the demo progresses based on that in initial steps you will use 0 1 ssh keys and in next steps you might be using 0 2 docker image and in the following steps you might use 0 3 cloud build.yaml so everything is organized in a sequential order so we don't get confused about how to use them and implement them so that's the way we have organized all the yaml manifests and also all the related files required for each demo and the course also have a GitHub repository, course main GitHub repository with step-by-step -step documentation available at github.com slash stack simplify slash Google Kubernetes engine. And also the course presentation is also present in the course GitHub repository in folder course presentation. And inside this presentation, we have 400 press presentation slides outlining various architectures and concepts we have implemented. In addition to that, if you are uh, uh, not aware of Docker or if you are a starter uh, without knowing about Docker, we have also included a Docker fundamentals section at the end of the course, wherein you will have a brief idea about what is Docker and how to install Docker and then how to create a Docker image and then how to download a Docker image from Docker Hub. Those details are present inside this Docker Fundamentals repository. And also its equivalent presentation also presented this link. So this completes the introductory part of this course. And most of my students ask for a detailed introduction. So for that, we are we're going to the next slides to understand in detail what we are going to learn as part of this course. So if this sec introduction is sufficient, then you can skip here and move to the next video. And if you want a detailed introduction, so we can move on to the next slide. So as soon as we start the course, we'll focus on learning about Kubernetes architecture. So we'll know about Kubernetes master nodes, worker nodes, what is Kubelet and what is Kube API server. All these things we'll learn and we'll move on to implement Kubernetes fundamentals in an imperative and declarative way. So for Kubernetes pods, replica sets, and then deployment and service. So for all these things, imperative way, which means using the kubectl command, we are going to implement. And using the declarative way, using live template writing of YAML manifest, we are going to implement that one too. And this is a 4.5 hour Kubernetes fundamentals section with close to 18 demos. So which gives in and out of implementing Kubernetes and gives a lot of confidence once we complete this initial 18 demos itself. From there, we'll move on to creating a GKE private cluster. So in the previous 18 demos, whatever we have implemented, so there we have created a GKE public cluster, simple standard default cluster. But here we'll create a private cluster and when we are creating a private cluster, we are going to learn about concepts like VPC network peering, private connectivity, and how you are going to pull the Docker image from Docker Hub to your private cluster related deployment. For that, how you are going to create a cloud NAT service. So all these things in an architectural way and also in a practical way, we are going to learn. And from there, we'll move on to implementing the Kubernetes storage concepts. And in Kubernetes storage concepts, we are supposed to learn storage classes, persistent volume claim, and also persistent volumes. So all those things we are going to implement using a sample application called user management web application. So GCE, PD, CSI driver, we are going to use to implement these things. And we are going to use the GCE persistent disks as a storage disk for implementing this. And if you see, we, ha we, ha we are having a detailed architecture diagrams for these implementations and we are going to implement them in detail. And once we implement and then test it, we'll also focus on how to take the volume snapshots. So we have implemented a persistent disk related concepts in our Kubernetes and we will also implement volume snapshot concepts with that. And in addition to that, we'll mo move on to also understanding about instead of using persistent disk CSI driver, can we use the out of the box databases available in Google Cloud like Cloud SQL. And we will implement a cloud, the same UMS user management web application related use case, we will implement with Cloud SQL after implementing it with GCE persistent disk. 
for MySQL. And after that, we'll move on and implement the Cloud SQL with public IP and also with uh, uh, private IP. And when we are implementing it with private IP, so how the connections are going to take place and then what is this VPC network peering and private connection? One more time we are going to explore and understand in detail. And in private service connection also, we are going to implement two demos, one with external name service and one without external name service. And from there, we'll move on to another storage concept called file store. Earlier, you have used the storage Kubernetes storage concepts for GCE, Google Compute Engine, persistent disks. Now, you will use the file store concept here and implement a demo here. And this once this file store demo with dynamic provisioning is completed, for this file store demo also, you will focus on implementing the volume snapshots and also volume restores. And from there, you will move on to understanding about L4 and L7 layer load balancers. So you already implemented as part of first 18 demos wherein what is cluster IP service, node port service, and also oh, low internal external load balancer service. So all those things we have implemented. Now we'll focus on learning and implementing about L7 layer, which is nothing but ingress services. So we'll implement a external and in internal ingress service here. And we have close to 17 demos implemented for ingress because ingress is a huge and very important concept which we need to know from Kubernetes perspective when cloud is in picture. So how to deploy your application and how to route the traffic to your application. Everything depends on this HTTP load balancer or this layer 7 load balancer. So that's the reason we have implemented 17 demos for ingress. And in these 17 demos, so we are going to understand about ingress basics, wherein a basic ingress demo we are going to implement. And from there, we'll go ahead and then implement the ingress context path based routing demo. And from there, we'll also implement the ingress custom health check demo. And after that, we will implement the ingress external IP demo. And we'll also use the ingress Google managed SSL certificates. And with cloud DNS in combination, we will implement this demo, which is ingress managed SSL demo. So here you can see it. You have the cloud domains, cloud DNS, cloud external IP address with Google managed SSL certificate. So all these things are included as part of this demo. And from there, we'll also implement HTTP to HTTPS redirect, which is ingress SSL redirect. And after that, we will understand about GKE workload identity. So this is one key critical concept in Google Cloud, which we need to be sure about it. When we are implementing and giving access to multiple resources from one resource to another resource, when we are giving the access at that point of time, GKE workload identity plays a key role. And to have the, to understand that concept, we have implemented a dedicated demo in, in combination with Kubernetes, which is GKE cluster. So why do we need this? when we are doing the ingress is because we are going to use a external DNS controller in Google Cloud GKE. That external DNS controller is going to add the cloud DNS records automatically using the Kubernetes ingress manifest. And to do so, first we need to understand what is workload identity concept. So once we implement a dedicated workload identity concept, and understand that in detail, then we'll move on to the next step, which is GKE external DNS controller installation. So if you see here, using the workload identity concept only, for this external DNS controller, we have given the access to cloud DNS, wherein from this respective external DNS controller deployment pods, we'll be able to add and delete the DNS records in cloud DNS. So here, we get a perfect idea about workload identity, how it is working in Google Cloud in combination with GKE. And after that, we will implement a ingress external DNS demo uh, with ingress service. And we'll also implement external DNS demo with Kubernetes load balancer service. External DNS controller can work with both the ingress service and also a regular L4 load balancer service. So that's the reason we will implement this demo also. 
and from there we will understand about SSL policies and we will implement a ingress SSL policy. So we'll implement a SSL policy in ingress service and after that we'll move on to implementing a ingress with identity aware proxy. So there you, you can see it here authentication and authorization happens using identity and aware proxy. So out of the box for our applications we will enable the authentication and authorization using identity aware proxy. So a Kubernetes hosted application we have provided the identity aware proxy which provides the authentication and authorization. So this is a very good demo and a very ex a very uh, important demo which we need to understand and from there we will move on to implementing ingress with self signed SSL certs. So earlier we have implemented a Google managed SSL cert. Now we will implement it with self signed SSL certs and from there we will move on and implement one more demo with pre-shared SSL certificates. So ingress with pre-shared SSL certificates also we are going to implement and from there we will implement ingress with cloud CDN nothing but content delivery network and after that we will implement ingress with client IP affinity and also cookie affinity and from there we will move on and implement ingress with custom health checks using backend config CRUD. So earlier in the second or third demo we have implemented health checks directly by using the readiness probes in our deployment but here we are going to use custom health checks using the backend config CRUD. So this is another Kubernetes resource custom resource. So using that we will implement health checks for our ingress service and after that we will implement the ingress internal load balancer. Once that is completed we will move on and implement ingress with cloud armor. So once this cloud armor demo is completed so we will move on and also implement Google artifact registry. So, er, so far whatever the demos we are using so for those demos we have a sample docker hub image docker images available on the docker hub and those we are downloading and then using it. But in this demo we are going to build a docker image and push the docker image to the Google artifact registry and from there only for our Kubernetes deployment we are going to download and then use it. So this is a very good demo for understanding and using all the Google cloud services only. We didn't use any external service here for our docker images too and after that we will move on to continuous integration and continuous delivery demos. So here from continuous integration demo we will use the github repositories as Google cloud source and for building the packages we will use the Google cloud build and for storing the docker images we will use the Google artifact registry and we will build a continuous integration pipeline and after that we will also implement a continuous delivery pipeline in combination with CI pipeline which means whenever you check in a app code automatically it need to build a it need to build your new docker image for that and that docker image need to be deployed to your Kubernetes cluster. So the entire CI CD flow GitOps style CI CD flow we have implemented here in 57 and 58 demos and from there we will move on and then implement Kubernetes probes like liveness probes, startup probes and readiness probes. Once that is completed we will also learn about Kubernetes requests and limits concept and once that request and limits concept is implemented we will also learn about GKE cluster, autoscaler, scale out and scale in. So once we implement this GKE cluster autoscaler we will learn about Kubernetes namespaces what are these default namespaces and all those things and also implement Q Kubernetes namespaces in an imperative way and declarative way and there is a lot of learning curve involved in learning about namespaces like namespaces in combination with resource quota and namespaces in combination with limit range we are going to learn and in limit range also we are going to implement two demos and understand more in detail about limit range with those two demos. This completes the introductory part of this course. In our next lecture we will go ahead and then start implementing the demos. I will see you in the next lecture until then bye bye thank you.